Hi, good day to you all. Uh, I'm here to um, uh, talk about amniotics. Uh, we are based here uh, at uh, Medical Science Village. And we're a cell therapeutics company uh, that base our technology on a neonatal cell source with uh, unique properties. And um, so we're a cell therapeutics company uh, that extract our raw material from amniotic fluid, the fluid surrounding the fetus. And we do that exactly prior to birth during uh, uh, planned cesarean section, so there is no risk for mother or child. We have a, uh, uh, a CE-marked uh, patented device to do this safely. And the entire process uh, is patent protected. The interesting thing here is uh, when we, we're talking about cell therapeutics, it's uh, as many see the uh, many future perspectives of, of medical treatments that cannot be addressed today, then we need good cells. And the younger cells, the better they are. Uh, so other companies look at, uh, at using uh, materials from, say, the placenta or uh, uh, the um, umbilical cord or umbilical blood. Um, all of these materials have their disadvantages. Our material is a medical waste that we use. Also, uh, we found when characterizing this material that it's comprised of four different tissue type MSCs. And we are the only company in the world that has this tissue specific mesenchymal stem cells. And that's because the fetus leaks these cells from different anatomical compartments, the lungs, uh, the urine, the skin, and also from the central nervous system. So we have a patented GMP-compliant process to extract and clonally expand these cells. We uh, fill them in, uh, in vials and cryopreserve them. So, I mean, what are we going to use these cells for? And of course, we can engineer the cells. I will talk about that um, also. But these mesenchymal stem cells have anti-inflammatory, anti-fibrotic effects. Basically, they heal the body. They, they are the conductors of, of the healing process. So they will go to where the damage is, and they will, their response is adaptive to the type of injury. So we are in amniotics looking at immune modulation, antifibrosis, and to support the healing processes. And our four uh, different uh, tissue types uh, of MSCs, of course, guide us. I, I mean, to a certain extent, these cells will have uh, system-wide effects in the body, uh, but we do have uh, certain effects that will be enhanced in, in applications. In the lung, we have a phase one study uh, active in uh, severe viral pneumonias, including, AR, including uh, COVID-19. And this is an analogy to ARDS. But here we are addressing the uh, fibrotic effects, uh, the aberrant inflammation. So you can see that is as a proxy marker for many other chronic lung conditions such as idiopathic lung fibrosis or uh, complications after lung transplantations, primary graft dysfunction. We also have um, uh, tried our uh, CNS-specific cells uh, in nerve damage model and seen neuroprotective effects. In dermatology, uh, a less developed program of ours, we have seen uh, effects in vitro on wound healing. And the less, uh, the less explored one is the kidney and renal specific. But we think it will be an interesting candidate also for immune tolerance during uh, kidney transplantation. And that is a rapid re rapidly growing field. So, MSCs are great. Uh, you can extract them from adults, from adipose tissue, from bone marrow, etc. But they are not alike. So, uh, the cells we have uh, have proven themselves when we uh, compare them to other sources of MSCs to have a, a very high proliferative 
capacity whilst still maintaining high biological efficacy. So we came from one collection, we thought we'd have to collect loads of amniotic fluid, uh, you know, to have the cultures going, but from one collection, uh, we can uh, treat uh, over 6,000 patients. So it, are, these cells are very good uh, in a sort of industrial setting, because that is also a factor we have to take into account. I mean, we do this, we do this in the lab, we get great results in the facts and in an animal model, but how do we scale it up? How can we treat thousands of patients, tens of thousands of patients? And also these cells have, uh, with this good uh, genetic stability and proliferative potential, we can also use them for other uh, cell therapeutic applications as a raw material. So our pipeline right now, uh, the most developed one is the pulmostem, a lung-specific cell. And we went there, of course, because of COVID, because <laughs> all clinical possibilities of performing studies shut down. And we thought that, okay, and we can maybe help out here. And uh, so that program was uh, put in the forefront, and that is in phase one, currently ongoing, currently today, treating another patient. And... Uh, the, the next development uh, we are looking at is in lung transplantation, where after the transplant is, uh, both when the transplant is on, on its way to the patient and put into the patient, there is severe infl inflammation, um, and we, are, uh, we have very good animal data that support that, that this therapy can improve lung transplantations a lot. So we are... Uh, right now, uh, looking at uh, a phase one uh, and planning it together with thoracic surgeons. And then we have a very exciting program in oncology, NK003. So this is our uh, Palmostem ongoing study, a dose escalation study with, um, uh, with uh, 9 to 18 patients. And it's ongoing and expected to be ready first half of 23. And... Uh, our newest program, which I'm very excited about, is our CAR-NK program. And one of our founders, Niels Bjorn Woods, um, uh, has worked in concert with doing the work in MSCs. He's worked in, in blood development protocols. So we have a, 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 an evolving patent family uh, where we're looking at... You have the CAR-Ts. You've heard about them, how efficient they are, and improve your chances of surviving a leukemia. But you have to take these cells out of yourself, have them genetically altered and getting them back again six, eight weeks later, and at the cost of uh, um, four or five million sec. Uh, and the next generation therapeutics needs to be uh, cheaper, ready off the shelf. And here, natural killer cells are most interesting. So amniotics, uh, two weeks ago, were granted an EIC Pathfinder program where we're project lead, and we have uh, uh, Hanover Hochschule, Lund University, and Copenhagen University to do CAR-NK cells uh, with uh, even enhanced uh, technologies. The next step from CARs is trucks. So, uh, and the targets within this program are not only hematological tumors, but... Uh, also, we're looking at glioblastoma and pancreatic cancer. So, the possibility of, of um, and to have allogeneic, off-shelf, uh, enhanced NK cells. And that is uh, one of the two focus programs we have now at Amniotics. We have a GMP facility, uh, which allows us to do... Uh, uh, pre-GMP development or pr full production uh, of uh, our own cell pharmaceuticals, which we are currently doing. And um, so this is our uh, leadership team. Uh, and uh, we have the board of directors, Peter Bill Jensen, uh, a Danish oncologist and uh, a broad experience of... Uh, setting up and driving oncology companies, and Fredrik Tiberg from uh, Camurus, Ingrid Atterid-Heyman, and Christopher Bravery, who's a world expert in 
stem cell development and regulations. This is amniotics. Any questions? Does it sound exciting with the stem cell therapeutics? Yeah, it's like antibodies were 30 years ago, maybe. I mean, it's, it's an early field. So I'm going to start with one question then. Mm -hmm. I'm a bit curious about the donation process. Could you elaborate a bit? Yeah, it's... Um, uh, so for, for parents who are having a planned cesarean section, which in, in Sweden accounts for about 10% of births, uh, the, the parents are simply asked if, if they want to donate this material for, for uh, medical use. And, um, and the will to do this is very high uh, because uh, we define what, we're going to, what uh, field of treatment we're going to use them for. And uh, yes, it's, it's, a, it's a very high willingness to do this. And, and it, of course, has to do with uh, that it's... it's uh, uh, and basically no risk procedure. We've had zero complications in it. You, you have to get rid of this fluid from the, uh, from the operating area anyway. So either it goes out uh, uh, the operation suction device and into, uh, into the drain, or we can do something valuable with it. So it's a very high acceptance towards it. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. I have a question to the technology. So how do you separate the four different types of MSCs? in that process, and also how do you differentiate from IPS all the way to NK cells? Yeah, uh, so what, what, what we do is we did, uh, we did uh, uh, a, a, a wide uh, gene expression analysis of these when we characterized the cells. And we, so we, we, we got a, uh, basically a fingerprint on, on surface markers we um, explored. And then we do it via fax. That is how we, do, how we select them. So we, so we have the, these different profiles, and then we have chosen the sort of ideal markers uh, for us in this process. And yes, and with the NK project, and that is, uh, that is of course, the... the, the um, we have, it, it's, it's a multi-step process because the problem with generating uh, sort of uh, uh, in the test tube synthetic blood has always been a, a, a problem of getting a high output, a high enough output to be industrially uh, viable. So uh, one part of, of, of this uh, IP portfolio we're building is to enhance the output of going from IPS to uh, hematogenic uh, progenitor cells and onwards into the differentiation. So one side of it is to increase the output. And the other, the novelty side, and you can read about this uh, in, uh, in the new section on our homepage. It was, in, I think, in February, really, the press release. So one uh, of uh, our co-founders then published what we had sort of patented before. Uh, is to use, we use uh, metabolic regulators, basically mimicking what's going on in the bone marrow to enhance and to increase the specific guidance towards, for example, NK, or we can alter this, but we choose NK because we, do, we don't want to do this with T cells. We want to do this with something that can be generically used, and then we use NK cells, and then amplify it with a cork construct. Yeah. Does that answer your question? More questions? Oh, over there. Uh, congratulations on the nice technology here. Uh, I was wondering which targets are you going to use for the CAR NK cells, since you mentioned solid tumors and there's not a lot of targets defined at the moment. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not, you're quite right about that. And, and that is what is in, in, uh, in the EIC project. Uh, but... but uh, um, but we do we do have we do have a, a, a pre-identified target. It's also about the the combination in doing this. Uh, this is the the sort of the the, en the enhanced core technology in also having uh, uh, sort of a, a, a heightened uh, immunosurveillance from these cells in combination. That would be the trick. Yeah. Hey, Marcus. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> I, was, I was wondering about these four uh, different cell types that you describe. 
and you, you call them also MSCs, that they are different kind of MSCs. But do they have similar MSC characteristics, differentiate into uh, different cell types that MSCs are supposed to do? So are they, are they alike in that way, being MSCs? And, and then in what way are they then different? If they, they are, are MSCs. It's 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 a great question, Evie, and uh, but they they are they are very much alike. We we, we think that this is this is uh, residuals from from the tissue that they have been uh, um, uh, harboring in. So they they perform uh, very much alike uh, when when expanding them and in 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 the differentiation assays we use. Uh, however, they, 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 they have, I mean, any MSC you get out must have resided in a preferable tissue. And, and we know that tissue-tissue interaction, I mean, the MSC works via tissue-tissue interactions. So, and also, the amniotic fluid has a turnover of less than 72 hours. So this is a very fresh material. So they, they come out into this environment all the time. Uh, but I would say that, that from a general, if we look at the general uh, differentiation assays we use, they perform uh, in, in, a, in a similar fashion. Uh, so, of course, this, 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 is, this is something we uh, in the company are investigating, and, and, and we're a small company, so, so we, could, we could investigate this so much more. But it, it is, it is um, uh, an intriguing phenomenon that they keep, keep these traits from the from, from, uh, from the source organ, so to speak, yeah. Uh, so Marcus, uh, from a systemic treatment perspective, um, it, it seems tricky to use stem cells. What do you know about the homing, homing properties of these cells? Where do they go? Well, we, we have actually, uh, I, we have an ongoing uh, study uh, looking at, uh, at uh, biodistribution, which I think is, is, is a question that, that always uh, arises. And we hope to be able to, to understand this more. And what we did, we also, in this study, we, we did not own, we did try other routes, not just the IV route, but intra-arterial route intraperitoneal, try to see, because you always have the biological filters. That is one of the good things with treating the lung. You know, if you give it IV, a lot of it will end up there anyway. Uh, but we have looked at alternate uh, routes and, 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 and to, to, to examine with a, with a predetermined damage model. Uh, so there, of course, is some uh, homing going on, uh, but also the mode of administration affects your target organ. If you want to go for the kidneys, I would go into arterial, for example. Yeah. So that's all of the questions we okay. had time for. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you.